Thank you. Okay, hello. So I'm going to talk about a theory I've proposed of inertia called quantized inertia. So uh, this represents the first, uh, in my opinion, mechanism for inertia that has been suggested. I've tested it successfully with uh, a lot of astronomical data, and um, it also suggests we can produce thrust from the quantum vacuum, um, specifically using capacitors, which is quite an easy way to do it. And I'll propose three applications, uh, satellite, uh, better satellite propulsion, a probe to Alpha Centauri, um, and a probe to the Oort cloud as well. So the, the idea is as follows. So uh, if you imagine an object accelerating to the right, this black ball here, then quantum mechanics and a bit of relativity says that that will see unruh radiation, um, which I've tried to show with red color. And uh, this has now been seen. Unruh radiation has now been seen at CERN by Lynch et al. Um, also, relativity says that on, on the side of the objects away from which it's accelerating, there will be a horizon because information from this black area can yet never catch up to the object. So the new thing that I'm saying is that this horizon damps this unruh radiation, which is a, a new thing. It's, it's combining, combining relativity and quantum mechanics, I, I guess. Um, so there's more radiation on this side, less on this side. So there's more radi radiation pushing the object back against its acceleration. And I've shown that this predicts inertial mass. Um, okay, but there's a caveat to this. If the accelerations are tiny, then the horizon starts to move back. And when the accelerations are low enough, then it'll be, there'll be a symmetry. The horizons will be the same distance away on both sides. And so this mechanism of inertia will collapse. There will be no inertia below that acceleration. Um, so I published that about 16, 17 years ago uh, in that paper there. Um, and it turns out that this loss of inertial mass exactly predicts galaxy rotation without dark matter. Um, so I won't go into the graph because I don't have time, but uh, you, can, you can ask me about it. Uh, the data on galaxy rotation expected acceleration is there, observed is up there. If Newton was right, we'd have the dotted line, um, uh, but it seems not. We have the data, the gray squares, and the theory predicts the um, increase in the observed acceleration for low accelerations perfectly. It does it with a simple equation, and there's nothing adjustable in this, so I can't, I can't fudge it. Um, it's got one chance to be right, and it is perfectly right. And it even predicts the, the radius of galaxies at which the behavior starts to deviate from Newton. It predicts that exactly. So I'm, I'm very confident about this result. What's it all. Beta? What's the diameter of beta? Oh, yes, that's the uh, cosmic scale, the um, Hubble diameter, 10 to the 26 meters or so. Um, also, I've looked at wide binaries because I wanted a, a better test, because dark matter can't be used to explain wide binaries. They, they orbit far too fast for standard physics. Um, normally dark matter will be put into them to bind them because we see that they're bound, but you can't do that because dark matter has to stay spread out on large scales and you can't then also uh, concentrate it into tiny solar systems. Uh, okay, so published that in 2017 and this one about 2019. Okay, so uh, this is all very nice and astronomical, but can we, can we use it? So if, you under, if we now understand inertia, we can, we can use it, uh, we can control it, and this will be a horizon drive. So if you imagine, in a theory, an, an electron is moving, accelerating to the right, and it sees under radiation on a, more to the right than the left, so it gets pushed back. If you put the electron in a capacitor, or any structure that damps the under waves, then there'll be a, a null zone here with very little under radiation, and that, there'll actually be more behind it now, because I've shown that with blue and that's, that would black. So it'll be accelerated this way in a new way, a quantum way, and uh, that will push the capacitor when it hits the, the anode, it'll push the capacitor. That's, that's the idea. Um, so I published something about that here. The um, idea of using a capacitor here was actually suggested by two guys called Becker and Bat, who I've been liaising with uh, in recent years. Uh, so several labs have been testing uh, for this, um, I, I got a million dollars of funding from DARPA to, to look at it. And so the, the test looks something like this. We have a capacitor here, uh, two aluminium foils, we capped on dielectric between them, and we accelerate electrons across. Um, so this produces an acceleration so, so great, 
um, that the ionic radiation becomes uh, short enough in wavelength to actually start to interact with the metal of the capacitor. That's the idea. Um, and then we put it on a tower, digital balance. Other labs that I'm, I've been liaising with, because several labs are helping me, uh, both paid and voluntary, um, they, they use a pendulum as well, uh, which doesn't suffer from the problem that digital balances do. Uh, so, yeah, so we have quite a lot of data. So uh, the team of Becker and Bat, um, this graph here shows the separation of the plates and the force they got, the uh, black diamonds of the data, and the, uh, the theory predicts the, uh, the squares. So it's pretty good. It predicts the correct uh, variation of thrust with the separation of the plates, uh, certainly within the error bars. Um, more, more recently, both we at Plymouth and the company in the US called Ivo Limited have also set up labs to look for this thrust. And Ivo, they've sent me their data, and they see things like this, the, the black line here, this is voltage applied, this is thrust, and they also agree with the, the theory. Um, our lab data seems more messy at the moment, more noisy, but we have a, an R squared of 0.54. Um, you can see this is the predicted thrust along this axis, and this is the observed one. So we would hope our error bar is about 20 milligrams. Oh, one minute. Right. Um, so we would, we would hope that we would see some, uh, some data up here and down here, and we do. Um, but yeah, we need to test more on that. Um, so application one, uh, replace iron drives, so we can do a much better job than normal iron drives. Um, they usually need to carry propellant, which makes them very heavy, need a lot of power. With capacitors, we can, we can do it with uh, much less weight and much less power. This would make possible a trip to the Oort cloud within a year. Um, so with a spacecraft looking something like that, perhaps, using an RTG, and a trip to Proxima Centauri in about 10, 15 years, something like that. So you'd have a, a spacecraft with lots of horizon drives on it, powered by an RTG, camera radio, radio back to Earth. Um, there'd be a string of probes so they could radio back along the line. And OK, so um, so concludes. Quantized inertia is the first uh, model for inertial mass. I've tested it very carefully in space using astrophysical data, and it's passed with flying colors. Um, I suggested this lab test and this thrust. I got funded by DARPA. Um, this American company is actually launching a test into space in October uh, to test the thruster in space. Uh, my DARPA funding ends in July, so I'm work working on ways to keep this going and enhance the thrust. So I'd like to set up a Horizon Institute, something like that, mm -hmm. um, to work on the theory and also have a lab to enhance the thrust. We can do that by reducing the separation between the plates, uh, we think. And uh, yes, and I've also written books. That's my textbook, Physics from the Edge. You can buy on Amazon, and that's a, a novel based on the theory as well. So, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, we have time for a question or two. Uh, well, let's see. Is there anyone else who wants to ask a question? Uh, maybe we go with Martin first. And uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, one is, would this happen naturally when in the acceleration of cosmic rays that you would get this effect? Because you've got some very rapid acceleration. Yes, it might. If the acceleration was rapid enough that the UNRWA waves they saw were short enough to start to interfere with physical objects. Fun to calculate that. And do I get the impression there's no propellant? It just does. No propellant, but power, but no propellant. Okay, okay. okay. maybe have one more Kieran. you fast. Aren't the colors the red and the blue reversed on your thing? Like it suggests that the UNRWA radiation is redshifted in the direction of acceleration. Is that correct or is that just you've swapped the colors? Oh, I, ju I just used a more intuitive, well, yes. Uh, All right. More intense radiation it is red, so. Okay. It, you're, you're right. It's, um, it's All right. All right. <laughs> um, so, okay. I have other technical questions I'll ask offline. <laughs> Please do uh, ask my questions up online. Um, I would also love to know from you. Uh, please, what your challenge is uh, that you want others to work on? Maybe how, how, best, how best to fund a Horizon Institute. How best to fund a Horizon Institute. Okay, okay. wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you.